Rasta Haya. We give you glory. Lift your hands towards heaven and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, say, I yield myself to you. Say, I submit myself, my desires, my thoughts, everything, my cravings, my intentions. I yield them to you. Guide me, instruct me, teach me, stop me when it's necessary, and take me to where I should be. Make me the man I should be. Lift your hands. Father, we give you glory. We honor you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Be exalted. Be glorified. Thank you. In Jesus' name we'll pray. Give the Lord a big hand. You may be seated. Job chapter 8. Please let me make welcome your neighbor to church. Third person, good evening. You're welcome to service. Welcome the other person. Ask the person, how was your day? Did you have a wonderful day? Job chapter 8. Job chapter number 8. I want us to pray tonight. And I need you to understand that you can never be wrong praying. There's no way you can be wrong praying. There are certain situations that things will arise and then you take certain actions. And after that, you regret your actions. But there can never be such thing as I regretted praying. Church, are you with me right now? There can never be such thing as I regretted praying. Look at Job 8 verse number 9. Job 8. Job 8 verse 7, sorry, Job chapter 8 verse 7. He said, though your beginning was what? What, hap what will happen? Yet your later end would what? Increase abundantly. I'd like you to say to yourself, one, two, go say, though my beginning was small, say my later end shall increase abundantly. Say it again. Say, though my beginning was small, say my later end shall increase abundantly. Say it again. Say, though my beginning was small, my later end shall increase abundantly. Let me show you Luke chapter number 9. So first thing I need you to understand is that God makes small things to increase. Did you hear what I said? God makes small things to increase. We serve a God of increase and multiplication. No matter how small it is, we serve a God that has the capacity to make it increase. Job said, though my beginning was small, my later end shall greatly increase. And so we serve a God who is a specialist in making small things become Big. Church, are you with me right now? Look at Luke chapter number 9. From verse number 7. 
Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by Jesus, and he was perplexed because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead. And by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the prophets had risen again. Herod said, John, I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? So he sought to see him. And the apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethesda. But when the multitude knew it, they followed him and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who had need of healing. When the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that, we, that they may go into the surrounding towns and countries and lodge, and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. Verse number 13, read together, one to go. But he said to them, You give them something to eat, and they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all these people. Go ahead. For there were about 5,000 men. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of what? Fifty. And they did so and made them all sit down. Look at this, verse number 15, read together one to go. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. Go ahead. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare tonight that there will be increase and multiplication. Yeah. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that there's going to be increase and multiplication. Yeah. I command everything right now in your life that requires increase and multiplication. By the blessing, let there be an increase. Amen. Everywhere you are, say, God makes small things big. Amen. Say it again, say, God makes small things big. Amen. Say it again, say, God makes small things big. Amen. Say it again, say, God makes small things big. Amen. Say, God increases small things. Amen. Say, God increases small things. Say, God makes small things big. So I like you to understand that we serve a God who is not intimidated that something is small. Are you with me right now? We serve a God that when he wants to do big things, he knows how to draft it from anything, no matter how small it is. Are you with me right now? No matter how small that thing is, God can draft something big from it. Are you with me now? We are declaring increase and multiplication. So the Bible said, Though your beginning was small, he said your later end shall greatly increase. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare increase and multiplication. Yeah. I declare right now that your business will experience increase. Yeah. Let your money experience increase. Yeah. Let your vision experience increase. Yeah. Let your career experience increase. Amen. Let there be a multiplication. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
the reason God is not in a business of always haunting the big is because there is nothing he cannot create with the small. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Nothing at all. The reason the anointing is such effective is that it has the capacity to grow anything from any state and then make it big. Are you with me right now? A Christian should never, ever, never, ever think that God does not mean what he said because what is around you is small. Are you with me now? That's why the Bible said, who has despised the days of your little beginning? He said, though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. So God is a God of increase. Are you with me now? God is not in any way bothered, no matter how small what he sees. In fact, I discovered that we serve a God that even though he has something big in mind, he starts small. Are you with me right now? And then inject into that small thing the law of increase and multiplication. And then you see it increase. Are you with me right now? And so, one of the things I want you to know this week, Wednesday, and next week, Wednesday, is that the small things around you are, big, are about to get big. Yeah. Listen, listen, the small things around you, they are about to get big. And don't ever believe God for the big things that you despise the small things around you. Are you with me right now? Those small things around you right now, that's the tool God wants to use to produce something big. The small things around you, that's what God wants to use to produce something big. Are you with me now? Those small things, they are the things God wants to use to produce something big. Are you with me right now? And so, there is need for you to understand how this thing works. The Bible said the disciples, Jesus, took them aside to teach them and to pray. And then some people noticed it and they strolled down to where Jesus was with his disciples. And then it was late and the people that were gathered were over 5,000 men. Excluding children and women. And the scripture said... Jesus was with them three days teaching. And when he discovered they were hungry, he asked his disciples that there was need for the people to be given food. The disciples said, no, sir. Where are we going to get the food to give to them? Send them away. Send them away. Where are you going to get the food to feed them? Send them away. Disciple, Jesus turned to them and said, how many loaves have you? Give them to eat. And they said, ah, what we have is nothing. We just have a little. Somebody say a little. They said what we have is just a little. Five loaves of bread and two fish. That's all we have. And how can you feed the people here? Just five loaves of bread and two fish. How can you feed the people here? And the reason the devil is telling some people that God's promises around them will not come to pass is because they look around them and they see a little. And you don't know that in that little, there is a law of increase that can cause a multiplication. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that your bank account will increase. Your business will increase. Your career will increase. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everywhere you are shouting, increase is coming. Say it again, say increase is coming. Are you with me right now? And so, most persons, you see them chasing a lot of big things, which is good. Not knowing that the small things around them has the capacity to become big. 
and how did Jesus do it? Pay attention. I will explain two things. Next week, I will explain another. Two things. The Bible said when the people made what was there available, Jesus said to the people, make the people sit down in their 50s. Organize them. And so the first thing you need to understand is that you need to organize the level where you are. Are you with me right now? Organize where you are now. Organize it. Organize it. If you know those things you are planning to do, when, let me use the word, when you have made it, start now. Are you following what I'm saying now? Organize it from the small state that it is. He said, Jesus said to the people, make, he told his disciples, he said, make the people sit down in their 50s. And the people were sitting down. Imagine what it means to organize 5,000 men, excluding women and children. And then they are sitting down in their 50s. Don't wait until the business reaches 100 million to organize it. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Don't wait until the incomes get to millions for you to start organization. In fact, organization will create the pathway for an increase. Did you hear what I said? Organization will create the pathway for an increase. Are you with me right now? As, and so people are always wishing, I wish there was more, I would have organized it. Oh, when we get to this point, we'll get organized. When we get to this point, we'll fix it. But the law of getting to that point is organizing it where it is right now. Are you following me right now? Organizing it from the point it is now. He said, make the people sit down. Normally, somebody will not see the reason why you'll be asking thousands of people to sit down in 50s when what you just have is five loaves of bread and two fishes. But Jesus brought a powerful law of increase that once you start organizing things, they start growing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare the wisdom for organization. Amen. Church, are you with me right now? Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, organize it. Uh, look at that person, tell the person, organize it. Listen, this is the time for you to start doing some paperwork. This is the time for you to start spelling some things out. This is the time for you to start distributing some things according to percentage. Are you with me now? That is the law that makes what is small to grow, to become big. Make the people sit down in their 50s. And they were doing that. They were doing that. Are you with me now? So when you despise the small things around you, you will not see any reason for organization. You just believe, oh, this is really too small for me to, let, let's just be going. Tell your neighbor, start now. Come on, shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, start now. So that's, that's number one law. The first thing you have to do for you to experience increase is to start organizing from where you are. Do you know that if you don't organize your time, 24 hours will still not be enough? Are you aware? Not at all. There is no way 24 hours will be enough if you don't wake up in the morning and organize the things you want to achieve. 24 hours will not be enough. And so, if you don't learn the law of organization, especially from where you are, then the increase you are talking about may not come. Because some persons believe that the future is that today will disappear. People don't know that today grows into the future. 
Did you hear what I said? It is today that keeps growing that ushers in the future. That's why some of the things you are asking the Lord to do, he has given it to you today. But some of them are still in their little state. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this God that makes small things big is bringing increase your way. Yeah. Come on, shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, organize it. Uh, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, organize it. Yes. Organize your business. Organize yourself. Did you hear what I said? Organize yourself intentionally. Intentionally. One of the answers to your prayers is God opening your eyes to what you already have that you have not noticed. If care is not taken, the devil will make you believe everything is in the future. And he will not make you know that some things you have right now is the future. Is somebody following what I'm saying? You know, I'm saying deep things here. Some things you have now, that's the future. Pay attention to organizing them. Pay attention to organizing them. Intentionally. Because if you don't do you still be wondering what is happening, not knowing that that thing that you prayed for, what is in your hand right now, is actually it. Let increase run on it. And I'm telling you how increase comes. You have to start organizing from the level that you are. Are you following me right now? You have to learn how to start organizing from the level you are. From now, make the people sit down. And guess what they were sitting down to come and share? Five loaves of bread and two fishes. Is it not surprising that Jesus organized to the point that even there were 12 baskets that were kept aside for the fragments that will remain? Church, are you with me? He organized to the point that what would have been wasted, there was also baskets to collect them. Are you with me now? The finances you have right now, proper organization of it will cause an increase. Are you with me right now? Organizing it well. Knowing what should be done per time. Knowing where this should go to and where that should go to. That's also part of what increases it. Say with me, say my future has started. Oh, say it again. Say my future has started. Listen, this awareness will help you to be conscious. It will help you. It will help you. He said, though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. So the first law is the law of organization. Start organizing things. Start putting things the way they should be. Start organizing your day. Wake up in the morning and write what you want to achieve. Write your target for the week and then be looking and be seeing whether you are achieving that. Are you following what I'm saying now? Yes. Do you know you can make it a point of duty that I will not reply any message until I've read my devotional? Are you following what I'm saying? Once I wake up in the morning, first thing is that I go to my devotional and then read it and read that whole chapter for that day. Are you with me right now? I was studying today's devotional and then I was reading that particular chapter that we read, I think in Luke 6 or so. I was reading it in Amplified. And I saw somewhere, I mean, I've never seen it before, that the learner will end up becoming like his teacher. Wow. I was so thrilled to discover that. So, 
That's the first thing. Learn how to organize from where you are. Learn how to be accountable from where you are. Don't wait until it grows. It is actually in doing so that it grows. Are you following what I'm saying now? Don't ever allow the devil tell you that the future is going to come. I want you to understand that it is today that evolves to the future. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that there's going to be an increase and multiplication. Make the people sit down in their 50s. I'm just thinking the energy they would have used. Somebody would have asked, what in the world concerns miracle and making the people sit down? Well, why, why should the people sit down? Jesus was showing us the law of increase and multiplication. Once you start organizing, you are making room for growth. Did you hear what I said? Once you start organizing, you're making room for growth and for increase. Make the people sit down in their 50s. So one, two, three, four, four, 50 here, one, 50 here, and they were doing all of that. Just a few loaves of bread and two fishes. The law of multiplication was being activated. Are you with me right now? The second thing I want you to also understand in increase is the law of the blessing. The blessing. The law of the blessing. And this is going to form a exercise tonight because we're in miracle service. And I've told you before, if you study through the scripture, the Bible said he gave some the working of miracles, meaning that miracles are worked. Are you with me now? Miracles are worked. There are things that when you put them in place, miracles takes place. Are you with me right now? There are things once you put them in place, miracle takes place. Let me show you this. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Genesis 1. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for arguments. You are God of us. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God. You are God from beginning, from beginning to the end. There's no place, There's no place for arguments. You are God of us. You are God all by yourself. Organize number two, you expose it to the blessing. You expose it to the blessing. No matter how small it is, 
the blessing will always bring increase. Are you with me now? If you study Genesis chapter number one, let me show you. Verse number 26. Then God said, let us make man what? Let us make man in what? In our own image, what? According to our likeness, let them what? Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over what? The birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Look at this. So what happened? So God created what? Man in his own image. In the image of God, he created what? He, he male and female, he created them. Verse 28, read together, one, two, go. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Look at this. So in Genesis 1, we see the law of the blessing. God said, let us make man in our own image. Please go back there. And I don't know whether you noticed the next thing that he said. Then God said, let us make man in our own what? Image according to what? Then what's the next thing you see there? Let them. You don't use them for man. The thing should have been let him have dominion. He said, let's make man, one man. Then the next thing he said, let them. So in one man, God was seeing all of us. Let us make man in our own image. And then the next good English should have been, and let him have dominion. What we now saw was, let them them have dominion. So, them was in the mind of God, but he started with one. Don't allow anybody despise your business. Your conglomerate have started. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Them was in the mind of God, and he started with one. Let us make man in our own image. And then the next thing we saw, and let them have dominion. How can you be talking about one and you're saying let them? So what was in the mind of God was them. And then my question, look at we're over 6 billion people on the face of planet Earth. How will God have created 6 billion all of a sudden? That would have been exhausting. So God had over six billion in mind, but he started with one. That's why he said, don't think the future is coming, it has started. I prophesy, let your business multiply and increase. Yeah. Hear me, it is this same bank account of yours that will carry 100 million, yeah. 1 billion, yeah. 2 billion, yeah. 10 billion. Yeah. I thought you would have said a better aim. Are you with me right now? You will not need to do a change of name and open a fresh account. The only thing is that there may be an account upgrading, but it's the same account. Let us make man in our own image and let them have dominion. So from the very first day, God created one man. One man was not in his mind. What was in his mind was multitude. 
And then how he was going to have the multitude was to invoke the law of the blessing. Because when the blessing comes in what is little, it multiplies. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your business is multiplying. I declare your money is multiplying. Look at the Lord that cost it. The Lord of the blessing. And God bless them. It's a proven law. That was why when Jesus was given the five loaves and two fishes, guess what he did? The Bible says he lifted it up and he blessed. So no matter how small it is, it's exposed it to continuous blessing. Is somebody following what I'm saying? It is better to have a little that is blessed than a big that is cursed. The little that is blessed will outweigh any big thing you talk about that doesn't have the blessing. That's why you should not be in a haste as a Christian to join the world in their system. Are you following me right now? Yes. There is a law of the blessing that causes what is small to multiply. Let us make man in our own image and let them have dominion. When he was saying let them have dominion, he was not seeing Adam alone. He was seeing me and you. He was seeing the people in Hong Kong. He was seeing the people in China. He was seeing the people in UK, people in America. Everywhere in the world, he was seeing everybody. And guess how he started it? He started it with just one man. Telling you that though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. God knew that that one man was going to multiply to the point that he would fill the earth. So God spoke to the man. The Bible said he blessed him. He said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. So God spoke the blessing upon one and that's the blessing that caused a multiplication i speak the blessing of god upon your finance your career your business let there be a multiplication Amen. come on say i declare the blessing Amen. everywhere you are say i declare the blessing Amen. say the blessing of the lord rest upon my household Church, are you with me right now? So once the blessing rests upon that, the next thing we notice is that there's going to be an increase. So Jesus lifted the five loaves of bread after organization. The next thing he did was to bless. Are you with me right now? So when God saw man and knew that he was going to be needing a lot of men, to do the work you'll be needed, doing here on earth. But what he had was just one man. God said, we are going to use the Lord of the blessing. And so the Bible said he blessed them and say. I've taught you before that saying is blessing. He blessed them and say. The Bible didn't say he blessed them and gave them. Every time you are speaking words that are gracious and glorious, you are speaking the blessing. So you can bless your business. You can bless your marriage. You can bless your family. You can bless the works of your hands. The Bible said he blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. So what God started speaking became the destiny of man. But guess where he started? From that small thing. That's why he said, though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. Don't curse your salary, bless it. Don't curse your business, bless it. Don't despise the little things you see around you now. What you need to do is to expose them to blessing. Are you with me right now? And by the time you are speaking gracious words, you are speaking the blessing upon that thing you're doing. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare the blessing of God upon your career. I declare the blessing of God upon that thing you lay your hands to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, by the time you are speaking the blessing, you are actually 
imputing into that thing you are doing the Lord of increase. One man, God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. So what God was going to do was take this one, speak the blessing of, of God on it, and then program into it what he should do by the blessing. And that was what happened. So God did not start creating and creating and creating. No, God took that one that he has done, spoke the blessing on it, and he started multiplying. I don't know where your business is right now. And I don't know the businesses you are expecting to come out of those business. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare the law of the blessing upon that business. And I declare in the name of Jesus that increase is coming your way. He blessed them and said look at proverbs chapter 10 proverbs 10 proverbs 10 proverbs 10 are you in proverbs 10 verse number 22 what did he say read together one to go the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he has no sorrow. That means the blessing is a maker. If you put the blessing on one, it becomes rich. I command the blessing of God upon your business, upon your career, upon your finances. In the name of Jesus Christ on earth. The Bible said the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow. So when you see the things around you that are small right now, don't despise them. What you do is to start speaking the blessing upon them. And that's one of the things we are going to do in this miracle service. You are the one that knows how big you want it to become. Do you know how big you want it to become? You are going to use your mouth to program what will happen there. That's why I told you. The Bible said he gave some the working of miracles. And so miracles are worked. That was what Jesus did in feeding 5,000 men. Immediately he did organization number one. The next thing he did was to expose it to the blessing. And because the blessing causes multiplication, while they were sharing five loaves of bread, he fed 5,000 men to a point that were 12 baskets left. The same question that will be coming to your mind right now should be, how in the world did it happen? That is exactly what will happen one day in your life when you will say, how in the world did we get here? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? How did it happen? How did it happen? You know, I've always told you, when we get there, it looks like we have it completely planned out. But you will just discover that it was just one thing leading to another, one thing leading to another, and you get to that place and you're wondering what happened. Just, I, I was just imagining in my heart, what was the, the disciples, what were they thinking? When they knew what they brought from, what they brought, there was five loaves and two fishes. And it was feeding these people to the point that there were 12 baskets left. The same way, there's going to be such an increase that you cannot give a full explanation to it. Amen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You can never give a full explanation. What you just know is that I kept speaking the blessing. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, prophesy the blessing. Come on, shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, speak the blessing on it. Is somebody following what I'm saying? That's how to do it. Speak the blessing on it. That was what God did. God made, made man, just one man, and he spoke the blessing on that one man. And guess what God spoke to that man? He said to him, be fruitful and multiply. What God wanted to see was what he programmed. If God wanted that man to be tall, he would have said be tall. 
but there was something he was looking for. He was looking for fruitfulness and multiplication. You are going to speak to your business what you are looking for. You're going to speak to your career what you are looking for. You're going to speak to your finances what you are looking for. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, increase is coming your way. Amen. Come on, say, I expose it to the blessing. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Listen, this is how it happens. The blessing. The blessing. Don't ever, don't ever, let, let me tell you, not just only the blessing that is coming from the pulpit, the blessing that is coming from your own mouth. You can intentionally bless things with your mouth. Is somebody following what I'm saying? With your mouth, you can program the blessing. You can. You can. When Jacob was leaving the house of his father, he left with nothing, just the blessing. He didn't go with anything, just the blessing. Just the blessing. That was what the father did, just to speak the blessing on him. And the Bible said, when the guy was coming back, he left with half of the wealth of Laban because the blessing was on him. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, increase is coming your way. Amen. Multiplication is coming your way. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. you can speak the blessing on it. You tell that business before this work is gone, another work is coming. Before I'm done, another one is coming. I'm going to be busy the rest of the year. You are speaking the blessing. And I'm not just going to be busy doing nothing. I'm going to be busy advancing and increasing. We have entered our Kairos time. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And you have to learn how to start subjecting the things around you to increase. Those five loaves, he exposed it to the blessing. And that's what you're going to do. Is somebody following what I'm saying? The prayer we are going to pray tonight to activate miracles is the prayer of the blessing. You're going to call your bank accounts and declare the blessing. You're going to call your business and declare the blessing. Is somebody following what I'm saying? You're going to call your company's name and declare the blessing. Are you with me right now? The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. There is a response of things around you that happens as a result of what is coming from your mouth. Church, are you with me right now? Five loaves of bread exposed to the blessing fed 5,000 men and 12 baskets left. One man on the face of the planet Earth that God exposed to the blessing till now we don't have the accurate figure. You can say the population of the world is about 6 billion. You can say it's about 7 billion. You cannot say the exact number. But there was a day it started with one. Oh, something just came to me. There was a day it started with one. And right now you can't tell the exact number. I don't know whether you know what I want to say. I don't know where it started now. You know where it started. But a day is going to come. When you cannot effectively say how big it has become. Amen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Yes, it will be uncountable. Amen. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? In that account, there are about... Uh, there are about... Uh, there are about... The last time I checked... Uh, but since... But now, even if they wake you up, you know your account balance. Correct? You just know. You know, you know. Like, if you see what you cannot buy, you just know. You just see it and pass. But a day comes. God started with one man. Exposed that one man to blessing. And right now we say the population is about 7 billion. The world does not know how it happened, but we know how it happened. And that's why when we are in church, we should be conscious. We know how man multiplied. How man multiplied was that God spoke the blessing and said, be fruitful, multiply. Before science came, this was what happened. Be fruitful, multiply. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I don't know the business laws we know. We are going to be using the Lord of the blessing. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. A multiplication is coming your way. Yeah.
touch yourself. Say, I am ready to bless it. I am ready. Say, I am ready to bless it. I am ready. Is somebody following what I'm saying? That's what you're going to do. As we pray tonight, you're going to start. Let me tell you, I want you to carefully select the words you're going to use. Is somebody following what I'm saying? I want you to carefully select the words you're going to use. Make sure that the words you're going to use, they are consistent with what you want to see. When I got admission many years ago, I was going to go back to school. My dad told me not to go until he comes back. And my dad's principle is such that once he leaves home, nothing brings him back home except he has retired from business for that day. Even if he forgets anything, he's not coming back to pick it. Once he leaves the house. But that day was one of those days I can't forget in a hurry. My dad came back home, not because he has finished doing business. He was still going to go back. But he came back that day specially to bless me. Around 11, he walked into the house, brought me to the room, and said, I don't want you to leave for school without the blessing. Do you know, most of the things I experienced on campus, they were captured in that blessing. The things my dad said as he was speaking those blessings, most of them became my experiences as a student. So there were some things that were happening those days. Some persons didn't just know what I was thinking. I remember that there was a day I heard words that looked like it. And this was the experience. And then he finished blessing me and left. He was crying. I was crying because he spoke such words that were so powerful. And so when you are speaking the blessing on that thing, no matter how small it is, the blessing causes an increase. The reason a Christian should not be scared of what is small is because we have something in Zion that causes increase. Is somebody following what I'm saying? The reason why a Christian should not feel so sad. Oh, this is, no, no, no. From that place you are, there is something in your mouth that causes an increase. Church, are you with me right now? He blessed them and said, let be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. And that was, that's what has happened now. Man has become fruitful, man has multiplied, man has replenished the earth, and he started with just one man. I prophesy to that your one business that has started as one business. Group of companies shall come out of it. Conglomerate shall come out of it. I speak to that your 1,000 naira. I speak to that your 1 million naira. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it shall greatly multiply. Yeah. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 was there before science. Genesis chapter 1 was there before common sense. Did you hear what I said? I said it was there before common sense. It was there before common sense. It was there before science started writing reproduction. God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. The Bible says he blessed them and said, because how to, be, how to bless is to say. And do you know that if somebody has put a curse around you knowingly or unknowingly, when you are speaking the blessing, you do away with what they say. The same way that light disappears, that darkness disappears when light comes. That's the same way causes disappears when blessing comes. And the Bible said the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and added no sorrow. The blessing makes a business rich and added no sorrow. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that the blessing is making you. Yeah. Everywhere you are, declare I am blessed. Be on your feet, declare, I am blessed. Yes. Say it like you mean it, say, I am blessed. Yes. 
say like me, say my business is blessed. Say my career is blessed. Let me tell you, you're going to pray for a couple of minutes and then the next thing you're going to do after you have prayed for some time is for you to pick those areas in your life you want increase and you start speaking the blessing. Listen, what you should speak is what you want to see. God wanted to see man replenish the earth and he said it. If God wanted more, he would have said it too. If you wanted less, it would have been reflected in what he said. Are you with me right now? And so the next thing you're going to do after charging yourself in the place of prayer is to start speaking the blessing according to what you want to say in that area. Open your mouth right now. Lega bragadea, loga bragada, ga bragadea, bragadea, lega bragados, ga bragadea, bragadea, randa boko shaka taka balanga, saka 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 balan